you have found yourself on Locked On Bulls. Um, today, damn, I don't like the way I did that shit. I still on my fucking intro. Um, you, <laughs> you found yourself on Locked On Bulls. I'm Hayes. That's Pat, the designer. Today, we'll be breaking down the Bulls win over the Detroit Pistons. Uh, Patrick Williams cleared for minimal contact, and we'll be talking about Demar and Zach Levine landing in the Ringers' top twenty-five players in the NBA. All that and more today on Locked On Bulls. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on? This is Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're going to start off today's episode talking about the Bulls finally getting back in the win column after a five game losing streak against the Detroit Pistons. Pat, how good did it feel to get this? Out? Listen, I was I was I was teed. Uh, after this third quarter, <laughs> I'm glad that we were able to pull it out, man. How'd you feel about this game? Listen, felt good to get a win. It didn't feel good while it was happening the entire time, yeah. right? But it felt good to get a win. Um, no, I mean, listen, it, let's not overstate it. Let's not lose our minds. Now, granted, we went on a five game skid. This is a win that gets us out of that. I'm glad that we got the win, but we can't come in here just like, this is a win that we expected not to get. We literally came out of the last episode saying, if they don't win this game, <laughs> we're going to have some issues. There's going to be some furniture moving around this month. So yeah, sure. I, I, I feel like, listen, I think we came out of tonight's game looking at Detroit more seriously um, and feeling better about, the, the then feeling better about the Bulls and how they match up versus a lot of these teams. But a win is a win is a win, and it's a win you needed. And no win is guaranteed, no win is granted. And for a while there, it didn't look like the Bulls were going to come out of out of this game with a win based on the energy they were playing with. And listen, credit to the guy who has been on the team the least amount of time, Tristan. For lighting a fire, showing that you have some heart, showing that, listen, we can say what we want, and this is what I mean about getting guys in the building, right? We can say what we want about guys who are role players on championship teams and not, but they know what it takes to get to that point. Even Stacey King talks about going to other teams and how it was very different. Yeah, And him knowing what it takes to get to that championship level. So having Tristan Thompson on this team, I'm not going to lie to y'all, dog. I know early on it hasn't led to a ton of wins, but I think in the playoffs, man, his even just on the sideline is going to be invaluable. That is this a fact. And I was not expect. Listen, I expected Tristan to come in here and give me seven, eight rebounds a game. Uh, uh, score maybe eight points a game and just hopefully not wind up with a Kardashian by the end of it. That's all I was hoping <laughs> for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just keep you away from the IG models. He has proven to me that he is going to be a much more valuable piece than I thought he was. And I'm not going to lie. I'm to the point. I'm like, yo, I hope he don't retire next year. <laughs> well, we got to remember Tristan's only 30, but hopefully he's not going to retire. But what I will say is that it was the needed jolt, right? Like you can see yeah. that the, this, these players and the youngers were starting to get flustered again. Something that we've seen in the last few games that when it gets tight, they start, they don't want to be the ones to mess up. So they play tense after Tristan and Tristan was going off. Like yeah. I didn't see his lips because we only saw like the side of him. I wouldn't be surprised if he dropped a couple F bombs at them because okay. they, and, and, the, and, but the thing that showed me what I needed to know is that nobody was looking away. Nobody was like, hey, man, forget what Tristan's talking about. Everybody's yeah. eyes were locked on Tristan, listening to what he had to say, and then they came out and they showed it. They showed that they took the words that he said to heart. And while they didn't still play a perfect defensive game after that, but what we saw after that, we saw key rebounds, key turnovers, pushing the ball with energy. It was a completely different effort from, from those players after Tristan went off on them, and that is exactly what we needed in that game. And it wasn't just Kobe White and Derrick Jones that you saw in the little clip in the corner there. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, as it pans out and goes away, I'm like, 
Oh, there goes Zach. There mm-hmm. goes Tamar. There go the guys that you need, that shouldn't need the fire lit under them, sitting there listening right along with all those young guys who haven't been in this situation before. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that. I love that. I love that they're in there as well. It does show. This is the one thing that we've always said about this team, right? It seems on the surface that they're pretty selfless when it comes to it. Now, play on the court, some people might say, well, DeMar doesn't give Zach the ball as much. Zach doesn't give DeMar the ball. They do a lot of one-on-one. But it really seems like this team really just wants to win. It seems like they're playing for mm-hmm. each other. It seems like – and and even in the five-game stretch, you know what I'm saying, where where we lost those games – it never seemed like they were turning on each other. They were putting the blame on each other. We're not getting this. It was all, it, or he's not getting this done. He's not getting this done. It was always, we got to be better. We got to do this. We And I know it, 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 you could say it's just media talk, but that stuff do mean something because we've seen the opposite. That's true. We've seen the, hey, listen, I'm not, we saw it. Listen, Ben Simmons isn't in Philly because of the opposite. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. You know, you don't got to call somebody out by name, but. When when Joel and B looked in the camera and said, you know, I really feel if we get that dunk right there, it really turns the tide for this team. We know the dude you're talking about. And that absolutely caused a complete split that was very unexpected coming into this season. So the fact that this team stuck together through this losing streak, I mean, they losing streaks come. Mm-hmm. You don't want to have a ton of them, but they do come. And so... Now you're looking at this team trying to figure out, hey, listen, going up against Cleveland, what did you do in this game that you can build on? There you go. And and it, this is this is a great thing. That's what we said that we wanted. We wanted to win, that they can go on, build some momentum, get their confidence back. A 17-2 to two run in the yeah. fourth quarter and then holding the Pistons to only 17 points overall in the fourth quarter yeah. were all great things to build off of, all great things to build off of. DeMar DeRozan, 16 of those points came from him in the fourth quarter. All those things equal a team that is winning. The Bulls also won the rebound battle, only by one, but they won the rebound battle. Uh, got Like I said, got key turnovers in the game. They only had 11 turnovers to the Pistons, 16 uh, yeah. turnovers. Everything just worked. Now, the three-point shooting, Maybe we need to talk about that a little bit. I need to see that three-point shooting improve. We were the highest percentage three-point shooting team for a while. Last few games, I wonder where we sit now. Three for 15 from three-pointer um, so far. It, well, in this game, 0 from 1 for a lot of players, 1 for 7 from Zach Levine, 2 for 3 from Kobe. It was it was bad. It was bad. What do you think about the three-point shooting on this team, and how do they add that weapon back into their arsenal? It, it's weird, right, because it's like – so right now, Bulls currently sit second in three-point field goal percentage. Mm-hmm. Um, they sit 28th in field go- three-point field goals attempted. Weird. Like, like I said, I, which could mean like they're taking the smart shots and they know when to turn away from them, which it doesn't feel like that in a lot of these games. Yeah. But, or, and it, I guess it means that there's about, 27 other teams ahead of us that are just chucking that thing at a ridiculous rate. You know what I'm saying? But but I guess, I guess it's not that weird, right? Because we, we know what DeMar is. DeMar is a, a mid-range assassin. Zach is kind of attacking the bucket. Io's been more attacked the bucket. It, I, I guess it's not as weird as, as I when, when you break it down. But the three the three ball, to me, is something where it's an asset. If you use it as an asset, you have to know when to go away from it. The Bulls tonight seemed like they knew when to go away from it, right? You didn't see a ton of three-pointers getting chucked up there. You saw the Bulls kind of attacking the bucket more. You saw the Bulls getting inside. Bulls points in the paint did a good job in this matchup here. Uh, won the matchup there 60-56. to 56. So I, I, I like the three ball. I like it as an asset, and I like the guys that are taking them. Listen, I, I don't want to see – I hate seeing Troy Brown take that first corner three that he always takes. You know, I don't want to see Derrick Jones taking seven threes. I don't want to see – uh, uh, um, uh, Io DeSumo taking seven threes. I want to see Zach Levine shooting the three ball. I want to see Kobe White shooting the three ball. And the thing I know about them, they'll knock it down eventually. They they didn't get yeah. it though tonight. They've struggled through this stretch. I think Zach's three has struggled due to the knee. He he gets a lot of lift on his three ball. A lot of lift. True. He shoots that much. He jumps a lot when he's shooting that three ball. So I think that he's uh, uh, him continuing to get better is going to do a lot for his shooting. And uh, it's something we're going to need down the stretch. Definitely. Definitely. Well, let's go ahead. Before we move on to the next topic, which we're going to be talking about, Patrick Williams being cleared for minimal contact, we have to talk about uh, 
a new product that I found, and that's Athletic Greens. And so I started taking Athletic Greens because I, as you know, Pat, I talked to you. I want to lose some weight. I've gained a lot of weight in the last year. I wanted to drop some weight, Me needed cool. to. So uh, I started taking Athletic Greens. And you may ask, what is Athletic Greens? Well, it's a dietary supplement that has 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source probiotics. Um, and it's just, it's really great for the body. Um in a healthy lifestyle, whether you eat keto or whatever else, it contains one gram of sugar, uh, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial, or artificial flavoring, and it supports better sleep quality and recovery. So if you're active, like I want to be, I know I don't get to be, Athletic Greens is really something that you may want to try out. So, so to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NBA network. Again, that's in, that's athleticgreens.com slash NBA network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, Pat, let's move on from that. P. Will, cleared for minimal contact. This is after we got Alex Caruso cleared for full contact practice. What does hearing this make you think that Patrick Williams' return is? And then what type of impact do we see him having upon his return? Um, To me, Pat, P. Will, I want to see him become the defensive player that he was again, right? We're, we're scoring at a high rate. Mm -hmm. we, we can score the ball at will. We put up 114 points tonight, and we shot the ball from three terribly. I don't need P. Will to be an offensive juggernaut right now. I, I mm -hmm. Listen, you take a guy four, I need you to develop into some kind of offensive threat. I'm mm -hmm. hoping you do become Kawhi. But I don't need him to be an offensive juggernaut right now because I've got DeMar, Kobe, Io, Lonzo. Those guys can score. Vooch, can't forget about the dude that shot the best percentage tonight yeah. those guys can score to me the biggest thing that you want to see p will do is be able to come in and make an immediate impact on the defensive end and more of an impact on the rebounding side of things but make an immediate impact at a minimum on the defensive end because that's where the biggest question marks have been for us all year um even tonight the 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 reason that we got down they start knocking down their three ball a little bit in that second quarter. The corner three wide open. <laughs> you know, mm, consistently yeah. wide open, no matter who the team is. So, like, I think that that's where I want to see him come in and have that immediate impact. If you give me something offensively, you give me something offensively. But I, I'm not even rushing P. Will. You know what I'm saying? If we get to the playoffs and P. Will's ready, if we get to that Sacramento game and P. Will's ready, either way, I'm good with it because I feel like there's enough on this team where a second-year player, he's going to need some time to work in. And I'm gonna sure. I hate to tell you all this. Like, if P. Will's the piece that you feel has to be there for us to win a championship, P. Will hasn't played all season. Hmm. P. Will hasn't had, didn't have training camp, didn't have, he had, a, did he play summer league? Did he play a little summer league? I think. Played a little summer league, yeah. Didn't have training camp, played a little summer league, played five games, and hasn't played all year. P. Will's yeah. not the savior. P. Will's not the answer. P. Will is a nice piece that you can add into this lineup right now, and you hope that he becomes that piece that develops further. But, like, if you can't do it without P. Will, then you have question marks on this team further than just P. Will. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, and, and I, I don't think the Bulls are there. So I'm excited to see him come back. I'm excited to see him get worked in, but I'm not rushing the kid. I'm not four games in talking about, see, this is what I told y'all. P. Will, he ain't got it right now. I don't know what P. Will, he, he's not going to be able to play. Like, yeah. That, that's what Muggs did with Kobe White. And I'm like, yo, he just came off a shoulder surgery that you kind of need that that limb to he shoot. He wasn't able to shoot. Yeah. Really? Like, yeah. And the thing with Patrick Williams that, that and I and I don't know if it was the you know Kawhi Leonard comparisons that people started painting them in, and then now you have you know the I won't necessarily call them the P will detractors, but literally if, if the guy isn't scoring fifteen points, they're like, oh P will he's he's overrated, and it's like he's twenty years old, yeah. right? Twenty years old, and then at nineteen years old, he gave you some great defense against the best perimeter players in the NBA that all gave this man. A lot of props for the way that he was able to play as a 19-year-old rookie. He played four games so far in his 20-year-old 20, 20 season, his second season in the NBA. We got to stop rushing these players. We got to stop 
trying to, you know, rush these players into the perfect version of who we think they're going to be and just yeah. let them develop over time. Listen, the, I, I get people who say P. Will's aggression. I, I will say this. One of my biggest things with P. Will is that sometimes he does turn down open shots when he should just take it, but he's 20 years old. Yeah, 20 years old. And now he's playing on a much improved team. So if anybody's thinking that P. Will is going to come back and be this aggressive shooter and get you fifth, tw- even 10, 12 points, that's not P. Will's uh, role this season at all. I would not be surprised if the Chicago Bulls don't run a single play for Kobe the rest of the season. It doesn't mean he's not going to get wide open shots. It doesn't mean he's not going to get opportunities. But they're not going to run set plays for Patrick Williams because guess what? They don't need to. He's yeah. on a team that is fully loaded offensively, especially with Lonzo Ball's out there too. You don't need Patrick Williams to score. He's going to be able to come in, hopefully give you defense as long as he trusts his body. He and, and you know he's not having any of those things where he's in his head. Let this man work himself in. Let him get this playoff experience, which is huge for a 20-year-old player to be able to get some playoff experience. And then we're going to run it back next season. His growth, the the player that Patrick Williams is right now, is not going to be the same player that Patrick Williams is two, three seasons from now. And there's no reason to try to rush it to get there. You do want to see growth. I'm not saying he needs to stay stagnant. And if he does stay stagnant, all right, we got some issues there. But let's stop rushing this guy putting all our hopes and dreams on him and just let him be a player that has the, the the time, the ability to just develop and let's see how it goes. That's all. That's all it boils down to. Let me ask you this it, with a player who we, we have said, listen, P will is he, he does. I'm not going to say he passes up a ton of shots because mm-hmm. there's some people that just like, he just passes up shots. P will was only getting about five shots a game. That's true. <laughs> He might have passed. The the difference is if you pass up two or three of them, now you're down to two shots a game. Now people are like, what the heck are you doing? Um, But with his, let's say, lack of aggressiveness and his Mm -hmm. lack of aggressive mentality on the offensive side of the ball, do you feel that the time off could hurt his development in that sense, in the mental sense of it? Because that's, that's the mental thing. Like, you yeah. you can't teach somebody to be aggressive. Like, Russell Westbrook yeah. came in, first play, aggressive, tried to kill somebody. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's, just, it's just in his blood. Yeah. I, there's definitely a chance of that. I won't say that there's no chance. The thing that I think, hopefully, that they've been doing with him, they said that he's been watching tape. And hopefully, in watching that tape, they're like, hey, Patrick, this is a, this is a chance where you should have shot that ball. You yeah. should have shot it here. So next time you get that opportunity, just shoot it. Don't even worry about it. If you miss it, Cool. Just take the shot. Um, but there absolutely could be a, 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 a issue that like we've seen players on this team who have played all season, especially when games get close, hesitate to take shots. So because of that, yeah, there's there's definitely a mental aspect of that 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 may work. And that's why I think what Patrick Williams is given the opportunity to just come in and do what he does best. And that may help his mental. Right. Is the fact that, hey, they don't need me to shoot eight shots in, this, uh, in the game. They need me to – they're going to get me – he's going to get some wide-open corner threes, especially with the way that this team runs offense. Let me just take those. Let us let me build on my game using that, and then we're going to move on. Yeah. So 100%. I, I agree with you, dog. I, I I feel like you can't – like you said, you 2022 is such a weird time in sports for me because you know how it was when we grew up. Yeah. You're – the players you picked, you rolled with them. Yeah, you know I'm saying like mm-hmm. that. Them, them early Bulls teams. Hey, I was the biggest bro, Tyrus Thomas uh, fan in the world, bro. You couldn't Tyrus tell me that Tyrus Thomas, Thomas wasn't going to turn you into. You couldn't something. tell me Tyrus wasn't a good defender because all <laughs> I seen him do was block shots. But let me tell you something. Adult me went back and watched that tape. It's a reason he not in the NBA no more. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. But yeah, it, there was so many. Like we just we. We're in a day and age where if you're not good in your rookie year, and I get it, it's because the talent pool is so much deeper now. But if you're not good in your rookie year, you're a bust. And there are some players that just aren't that way. Kobe White's in year three right now, and this is the first time we've really looked at Kobe White and said, no, he's being consistent. He's playing well. He's playing to his strengths. This is the first time, and I don't even think he's the player that he's going to end up being by the end of his career. 22 years old. So like I I I'm I'm always hesitant when mugs say you you have to these guys aren't good right now and he should be good because I, other people in his same draft class are good. Yeah. If we said that, we'd have never seen Jamal Murray become what he became. 
Yeah. Y'all remember Spencer Didwoody when he literally two years after the Bulls had him took off? Like, imagine if we would have just held on to that. Like, when you draft players, you want to give them time to develop. And I, I understand we're so close to, to contending. Bulls fans just want to taste that again. But we can't give up future. That's how you compete now and, and in the future. You can't give up all your young pieces just so you can feel like, hey, this is what we're doing to go all in now. Patrick Williams is going to be a key piece of this team for years to come. I mean, hey, I, I always say just ask the Lakers. Yes. There you go. Ask the Lakers. I don't I don't know. I don't know if they would have, but I really believe if you keep that team together and you let that team develop well and you put a good head coach with them. Mm. I, I I don't know if Frank Vogel would have been the answer that, in that situation, but I think with the right development, they could have had multiple championships. We're talking about Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, uh 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 Julius Randle. Um, um, Jordan Clarkson. Yeah, you know oh, that's it. They had a whip. Yeah, they had a whip. Now you got the bird in the hand. Is the bird in the hand worth the two in the bush? You got the bird in the hand. You got LeBron James there. You got your one ring. How y'all feeling? <laughs> well, <laughs> let's get off that. Uh, we got to talk to you guys. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. And no, I'm not going to sing like Big Dave. I can't do it. Uh, but this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing prices uh, and numbers of making models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly imitating questioning um, and wait while your person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing only the brand their warehouse happens to cover? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using rockauto.com. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family-owned business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Go to rockauto.com and now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in there. How did you hear about us section uh, to know that we sent you? Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. All right. RockAuto.com. <laughs> tradition. We're about tradition here. Uh, <laughs> so last topic for today. DeMar and Zach Levine both wound up in the Ringer's top 25 players in the NBA this season with uh, DeMar DeRozan coming in at number nine and Zach Levine coming in at number 22. Pat, what do you think about these uh, these numbers, these rankings? Uh, what do you think about them? Um, I can't be mad about them. Now, of course, there's always the, this guy should have been higher, this guy should have been lower debate. Mm -hmm. But I'm, we've got two players in the top 25. Zach Levine has been injured for a good chunk of this season. Now, he hasn't been... Let me say that out he's been hurt. hurt. Yeah, he's been hurt. He hasn't been injured. There's there's a difference. He's been hurt for a good chunk of this season. Right. And so I understand the positioning on it. Right. There's a lot of games where you can look at Zach Levine early on and say, oh, he absolutely should be higher because when he's 100 percent. He's this guy. But unfortunately, yeah. for a good chunk of the season, we haven't seen Zach Levine be that guy. So. Yeah. I, I get the putting Zach Levine at 22 uh, 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 argument. DeMar at nine. It's so tough for me, right? Because it's like, can you really have him in MVP conversation? Mm. And he's the ninth best player in the NBA this year, right? Because if we're having the argument debate, yes, Kevin Durant is absolutely better than most of the people on this list. Mm -hmm. I'd probably put him as the best player in the world when he's 100% healthy. But because he's hurt, he's four right now on, on the ringers list. Yeah. Steph Curry's five. Steph Curry's having the worst shooting season of his career. LeBron James is on a Lakers team that is struggling mightily, and he's been a big part of it, whether Lakers fans want to admit it or not, because uh, he's, he's been right there with Russ even in the turnovers. So, like, there's a lot of players I could nitpick at and say, hey, listen, you're putting these guys above DeMar, and yet every single time we hear DeMar DeRozan's name, it's an mm. MVP conversation. Now, yeah. is that more – now, I ask you this. Is that more disrespectful to DeMar 
or is that kind of where you think he really is in the grand scheme of players, but he's just having a great season in Chicago? Because I can't for one hundred percent say, yeah, Demar Derozan, I I always take him over Luka Doncic. Yeah, yeah. Like and, I'm not mad at Luka being above him. Yeah, but Demar's yeah. an MVP candidate. And 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 that's the thing that I think is important with the with the ringers list. Whereas like before the preseason, they rank players overall. This is literally ranking the Just best players season. for this season, right? Just and for this seeing it. Yeah, and but and because of that, I definitely can make the argument that Demar should be ranked higher yeah. than because of the season that he's having, not overall, uh, you know, as a player overall or whatever else or for their careers, but for yeah. this season, you, you, Demar not being in the top five or six, really, like LeBron James is number six, and so while ridiculous. LeBron oh. LeBron is one of the one of the best players to ever do it, right? Yeah. Come on, are we giving like are we giving LeBron? With the imp with the rank that his team his team is twenty eight and thirty six and I believe wins should play some they're not everything but they should play a factor and let's go over LeBron James stat line for a second he's twenty nine point four points eight point one rebounds six assists one block with a field goal percentage of fifty eight percent almost fifty nine percent because it's fifty eight point seven right now looking at that those are great numbers. Amazing numbers. But DeMar DeRozan, and this is this is one of the things that I think bothered me too. DeMar DeRozan, who was voted as possibly the worst offseason signing of the of the offseason, is 28 points, five point five rebounds, five assists, less than a block, a 52% effective field goal rating. Those numbers are close, right? And just because those and because those numbers are close, and DeMar is on an actual winning team that he's played won us games in the fourth quarter several times. I don't know, man. And and that may be the Bulls homer in me, but that some don't feel right about that. I I I <laughs> I'll say 37 player play a factor where Brian is on this list. I don't give a <laughs> Brian is six years older than DeMar and he's yeah. still the best. That's that's a fact. That's that, a fact. That's that's for, the the one for the question mark for me, right? Steph Curry's a question mark for me. Okay. Steph Curry's a question mark. Steph Curry's legitimately shooting, and I noticed how they 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 didn't add that in there. He he's shooting the worst of his career yeah. right now, and, and he's he 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 he's had games where the thing with Steph is we don't care. They're winning, doesn't yeah. matter. But he's shooting the worst he shot in his career. If we're putting Zach that low due to being hurt and playing through it, Kevin Durant should be lower due to having injury because this is just this season. I'm mm -hmm. not talking all time. Yeah. Right. I'm not talking. Of course, listen, the, the top players right now, all time. Yes. Uh, Jokic is above DeMar. Uh, uh, Giannis is above DeMar. Joel is above DeMar. KD is above DeMar. But now we get the, hey, this season. Yes. Golden State is playing well. They have a lot of wins second in the Western Conference. But DeMar DeRozan has kept his team afloat and put up numbers. And listen, I'm sorry, dog. I, I keep saying this. Y'all probably heard this about 12 times on the phone. Broke a Wilt Chamberlain record. record. Y'all realize. Y'all realize, right? 60-year record. We weren't That's on the this planet. 60 year, Shaq ain't break it. Kobe <laughs> ain't break it. Jordan ain't break it. All mm. these dudes where you like, Kevin Durant ain't break Kevin Durant hasn't broken it. Kevin Durant is legitimately one of the greatest scorers we've ever seen, if not the greatest scorer in NBA history. Yeah. He hasn't broken this record. DeMar DeRozan should absolutely be top five. I'm not going to say it's disrespectful that he's not because the players above him are great All players. All time great. Yeah. But this is for this season. And if you're talking this season, like you said, to me, wins do play a factor. Now, Brian being up there, okay, he's 37 years old, playing out of his mind is ridiculous. But wins should be a factor. And to me, Luka, even Luka being this low, right? For for, mm -hmm. for the Mavs fans out there, Luka being this low is a disrespect to Luka. And because Luka always gets overlooked. Like you forget Luka's a great player in the league. Must don't even put Luka in a top five in the NBA right now. And I'm looking at this man. boy, and I'm like, good Lord. <laughs> so, like, Ringer, little, little, little disrespectful with the list. But, hey, it's y'all list. Y'all do what y'all want with it. But I would have... I would have at a minimum those two above LeBron this season because they're winning and they're putting up the numbers. There you go. There you go. And I agree with all of that. Um, yeah. Uh, we got we to make, at the end of the season, we got to make our list. We have to do our list. 
top 25 players in the league list. Yeah. We'll have to do yeah, we can do that. We can, we can do, do that. Yeah, we can lock, get a list lock, going. Lock on Bulls, top 25 list. We'll see. We'll see how much traction we get on that one. Um, <laughs> anything left for today? Um, Nah, man. Bulls got a dub. We feeling good, man. Yeah, you know I'm saying? We didn't have to flip no tables. Now let's work on getting a dub versus Cleveland next time. Y'all, thank God that the Bulls got a win tonight because Ooh! I hate to see what that episode would have been like. I was Ooh. ready. Man. I was ready. I See, this is the thing, right? I strategically play stuff. I'd have had a table here. Y'all would have seen the <laughs> table flip. The tray table that's right here, I'd have had all my stuff on a real table, had something crazy, you know, some bottles or something like that. And I'd have, Ugh. Y'all, y'all see my history, man. Wait, go, go check out when I was live calling the Sky in the finals, and they got three free throws in the whole game. Man, listen. Not playing with me. <laughs> well, Pat, go ahead and give him your social media, man. Let's get up out of here. Hey, man, y'all can follow me on everything at Pat the Designer, man. And just, just avoid the smoke over there, man. Twitter's a wild place. But follow me <laughs> on, on everything at Pat the Designer, man. And follow uh, follow Locked On on Instagram at Locked On Bull. Absolutely. You can follow me at CEO Hayes, the CEO H A I Z E. You can follow us collectively at Locked On Bulls on every social media platform that we're on. Uh, but that's it for us for today. This is your Thursday episode of Locked On Bulls. We will see you guys tomorrow on Friday. We've got some great content planned for you, but we out. Junior Peace. Varsity with a dub. <laughs>